Today, we waited for the Fed to announce what it is going to do with interest rates. But as we know, Jerome Powell is a big fan of hiking. So he raised the interest rates by another 25 basis points. And Elon Musk says that a major driver of depositor flight is people moving money from low interest savings accounts to high interest government treasury bills, lending money to the government. This foolish rate hike will worsen depositor flights, says Elon Musk. Clearly, Elon is not happy at all with this decision. Elon has said before that if the Fed raises rates again next week, this was back in December, the recession will be greatly amplified and we have seen now multiple banks collapse. At the time, this was Jerome Powell's response to Elon Musk. He likes selfies. And clearly, his favorite color is red. The interesting part is the Fed just voted unanimously to raise interest rates. No one voted against raising interest rates. And Kathy Wood has a few ideas for the Fed, some data upon which the Fed may want to depend is as follows. Bank credit default swaps, bank deposit flows. These are not looking great. Bitcoin prices, for example, this indicates that people are trying to flee to safety, yield curves, commodity prices, housing prices, and consumer sentiment. Kathy Wood believes that a lot of these indicators are flashing red. She's not happy with the Fed at all. Do you know when was the last time the interest rates were this high? Back in 2007. Scary, right? The next Fed meeting is on May 3rd. <laughs> we'll see what happens then. And this certainly is quite reassuring. They also said additional policy firming may be appropriate and that the US banking system is sound and resilient. Hmm. It is so resilient that we still see banks crashing 17% in a single day. Certainly nothing to worry about, right? And just in case you thought only one bank is having trouble today, well, I am here to reassure you it's not just one bank. Definitely nothing to worry about. Our banking system is sound and resilient because Jerome Powell said so. If you compare the February statement to the March statement, there are some interesting differences. For example, this one before they said inflation has eased somewhat, but remains elevated. They said that in February. Now they just say inflation remains elevated. I mean, we know they want to cut that inflation. They want to suppress it. They want to destroy it. This suggests sort of that they want to keep increasing interest rates quite a bit still until inflation really comes down. And even though it is coming down, they are not even really acknowledging that with this statement here by making it sound like inflation is worse now than it was in February. And then they are basically saying that the US banking system that is in crisis, although they say it is sound and resilient, uh, this will result in tighter credit conditions for households and businesses, and this will affect the economy. So this would suggest they don't need to raise interest rates as much to fight inflation. But I can't believe they actually said this. If you read further until here, the extent of these effects, meaning the banking crisis, which will result in tighter lending, these effects are uncertain. Okay. This is the Fed. They turned on the fire. I mean, they are not really aware that the fire is going to start because, you know, the small fire that is going to turn into a big fire, it's not certain, it's not clear that that fire is going to turn into a big fire, right? And this happened just moments later. Yeah, it's unclear why that happened. Uncertain. There's also more footage of Jerome Powell. He's sitting right here. Uh, there's smoke, but why would you need to worry about that smoke on that curtain? I mean, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, weird smell. The effects of... It's not clear that the fire is really going to get bigger 
I mean, we're looking at it, he's looking at it, he sees it, but, you know, the effects are certainly uncertain. Yeah, so we're just gonna stay here, we're gonna evaluate the situation, uh, we're not gonna do anything, uh, I think that's Elon Musk running in the room. Uh, yeah, Jerome Powell now uh, wants to come closer to the fire, maybe evaluate it a little bit more. Um, yeah, we're not gonna grab water, just gonna go straight to the source of that fire, and we're just, we're just gonna double check that, indeed, that fire is going to burn down the whole house. Although, on the other hand, Jerome Powell was saying a lot without really saying much. You have seen that we have the tools to protect depositors when there's a threat of serious harm to the economy or to the financial system, and we are prepared to use those tools. And I think depositors should assume that their deposits are safe. So he's guaranteeing the deposits really without making any guarantees at all. Clearly our banks are in trouble, but maybe inflation is indeed going to come out as lower in a way that the Fed measures it. The banking system of course is complicated, but this is the best explainer that I have ever seen. How about the 20 bucks you owe me? Oh yeah. Well, I only got 10, so here's 10 I owe you 10. Thanks. Hey Mo, you owe me 20. Well, here's 10 and I'll owe you 10. Uh-uh, you owe me 20. Here's 10 I owe you 10. Here's the 10 I owe you. Here's the 10 I owe you. Here's the 10 I owe you. Good, now we're all even. Obviously, interest rates increasing super fast will not have any negative effects on this solid banking system. Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, completely contradicted Jerome Powell. Janet told senators around the same time when Jerome said, we don't need to worry about any of this. Janet said, blanket deposit insurance is not something we have looked at in any way. So although Jerome Powell de facto guaranteed all deposits, I don't really see that guarantee mean that much because he is completely contradicted by Janet Yellen. Jerome also suggested that massive disinflation is likely to come this summer. Jerome Powell also said that what happened at Silicon Valley Bank was not a systemic problem. SVB management failed badly at their jobs and that I agree with, but it could be that the management of a lot of these banks is systemically problematic. So if many banks have problems like this, sure, you can blame the management. And I think that is really the big cause here if you look at the everything short term. But the bank is not alone. And if you look at this whole problem with a longer time horizon, then I think we printed way too much money earlier. So sure, I blame the bad management of these banks, but also Jerome Powell can now look at all these other banks and find out and see, oh yeah, a lot of these other banks also have these bad management problems. And this makes sense here. The Fed thinks they are smarter than millions of traders who form price discovery in the 10-year treasury yield daily. As a result, we are all forced to play the squid game twice a decade. Artificially cheap credit fuels the bubble and excessively tight credit triggers the bust. They did consider a pause in rate hikes before this meeting, but economic data came in too hot to pause. Hmm. If recession comes, it will too come in hot. Jerome Powell does not expect any rate cuts in the base case at all. The Fed dot plot suggests that the rates will peak at 5.1% in 2023. Yahoo has one of the better charts for the dot plot. You can see 2023 right here 2024 and 2025 yeah um more increases are more likely compared to before when we were back in december but they do expect to cut rates quite a bit in the coming years as you can see here at some point lower interest rates are coming but the question is when are they coming i will certainly be waiting FOMC summary of economic projections indicates lower GDP growth expectations for 2023 and 24 compared to the December meeting 2023 to 0.4% from 0.5% and 2024 to 1.2% from 1.6%. The economy is certainly slowing down, but no cuts are expected, says Powell. In the meantime, we also have some very interesting developments going on. Someone is saying that a change that has not happened in 100 years is 
coming. These two presidents are talking to each other. Uh, that probably means nothing. I mean, that's what they said, that the big change is coming. And uh, for now, we will just be focused on our issues here locally in the US with inflation, I guess. I mean, there's only smoke and no fire, so things are just fine. You don't worry about anything. And this is the Tesla stock buying opportunity explained by Elon Musk. My name is Matt Posey. Just like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.